All right, what's up guys? Thanks for stopping back by the channel, The Auto Shop Life, hanging out with me, Jim, JRC54. So, came to the shop today, got to get my weekly video out there for you guys. It's going to be a Civic video. Finally got the uh, engine in trans in place. Check it out. Shut up and sit down. All right, guys, so if you guys follow me on Instagram, you can see I posted a couple pictures of the, the way the engine bay looks on the Civic. Um, I had a couple days this week to work on it. I, I probably put a good, you know, four or five hours in on it, trying to get everything where it goes, all that stuff. You know, getting this thing wrapped up to move on to the next step, which is going to be, you know, wiring, harness, uh, harness video. Um, I came in today with every intentions to... Uh, you know, start this video off and all that stuff, but I'm more or less gonna do, you know, an introduction to making your own wiring harness. And that's for any build. You know, obviously when you're doing builds, always keep the stock harness, or if you have a donor car, keep both harnesses, always have, you know, you can never have enough harness, but we're gonna use the stock harness. You know, it beats, you could spend five, 600 bucks on a rye wire or, you know, engine tuck harness and all that stuff. But, you know, I think for what we got here in the shop, wire, solder, you know, whatever materials we're going to use, I'm going to go ahead and just make this myself, you know, do a one-off wire harness for this build, you know, eliminate any plugs I'm going to eliminate, lengthen any plugs I'm going to lengthen, you know, have a material so it's not so thick, route it to different ways that I'd like to route it to make, get that clean engine bay look, but uh, we'll get into it. I'll show you guys where we're at with everything. Pretty much, you know, when you're about to make your own wiring harness or cut into for you guys out there that you know has made your own wiring harness you know obviously have a plan in place you know you definitely don't want to just go hacking in the wires and all that stuff you know have everything laid out that's kind of where we're at now um, you know I got all the wire wiring harness kind of laid out here on the ground you know I, I labeled them to make it easier I also made a list of the harnesses that we're gonna be keeping you know counting it make sure I don't cut the wrong harness and all that stuff but it's going to be more than just a wire tuck on this harness. You know, I plan on, uh, you know, any wires that don't have to come out of the car are going to stay in the car. I did relocate the fuse box that's normally underneath the hood. So that's staying on the inside. So a lot of those wires don't even have to go out to the engine bay. The battery's relocated to the trunk. So a lot of those wires don't have to come out to the engine bay. I am going to do a separate alternator harness. You know, that it's going to be a separate harness in, on itself. Um, and then, uh, and then of course the uh, the body harness. So there's two harnesses. Pretty much, you can see, you know, the big one here is the engine main harness. And you guys can see I kind of labeled everything out. Um, you know, which ones I'm going to keep, which ones I'm going to cut, because I did el eliminate a few uh, sensors. Obviously, AC, power steering. Um, uh, cruise control you know all those so I'm not going to be needing any of those this is going to be a one-off harness but basically you can see you know that's where it's going to hook to the PCM and then it hits the firewall there and then here's pretty much everything you would see on the outside underneath the engine bay I got labeled um, this big one here at the end of it actually loops back in to the car so this one here is just going to start over there and then instead of stretching on the outside I'm gonna you know route it under the dash and plug it in to the opposite side which is this harness here that's your you know uh, horn the headlights um, cruise control would be on this one the AC this is all gonna get eliminated this whole pigtail here so basically got everything laid out you know make sure got, when you guys are doing this you know have a thought in your mind you know have a process of how it's gonna look inside your mind you know kinda when you're doing any kind of fab work or build you know, I, I do have an image of what I want this to look like, but, you know, do your research, do your homework, you know, make sure, uh, you know, try to get a basic layout, even if you got to draw a diagram or however you got to do it to make this look right. But the plan is to, uh, you know, come out in the stock location, which is under, under the battery tray here that I'm now using for the uh, crank waste. By the way, this is uh, kind of what she looks like here. If you guys didn't catch it on my Instagram, got everything in place. Still got a little detail work to do as far as, uh, you know, weld those bungs into the valve cover. So that's got to come back off. I still got to put the injectors in there. But uh, that's kind of what it looked like. 
I got my uh, reservoir tank mounted down here. You got the drain and then I routed the hose for the radiator underneath and then back up through here trying to tuck the hoses wherever I can, you know, to get that clean look. But it's definitely turning out pretty good. Then mounted the regulator on the side here so, you know, easy to get to. When I'm tuning this thing, I was going to put it back on the firewall, but I figure, you know, AEM makes a pretty nice fuel rail, so, you know, why hide it? But that's what she's looking like now. But anyways, what I plan on doing, you know, coming out underneath the battery tray, bolting it straight to on top of the trans bracket here, and then everything else is going to go underneath the intake. So I'll have the main harness, you know, it'll be one solid harness bolted to here, whatever plugs, you know, the trans plug I obviously have plugged in, but everything's going to go from underneath here out. So we'll hide all the bulk of the wires underneath the intake and then just run separate wires up for the TPS, the IAC, the MAP sensor. Uh, there will be a big harness coming underneath, obviously for the distributor. So I'll do, you know, one main one going into the distributor and then kind of tuck everything else for the VTAC solenoid, you know, the temp sensors and all that stuff. And then there's also two sensors that go to the trans underneath. So you'll just see, you know, one little, one little harness going down, plug it into the trans. But that's my plan. Um, you know, the bulk of it's gonna be underneath the intake. So obviously, hence tuck, you're not gonna see a majority of the wires. Uh, pretty much anything that comes out through here is gonna be, you know, a separate alternator power wire. I will have a separate starter power wire. Um, and then your grounds, you know, your body grounds and all that stuff, I'll probably end up tucking down under there. And then you got your crank sensor down there, which is just two little wires. So the bulk of it here is gonna come up through the intake for the injectors. Every other sensors, I think I'm gonna be using, counting the injectors, about 22, uh, 22 plugs. So out of this harness, outside of the powers and grounds, I'm only using 22 of them. I'm cutting probably three off the main harness or maybe four off the main harness. And then the body harness is getting the majority of it pretty much cut off. It's gonna have, uh, you know, this comes out of the driver's side firewall, but we're gonna relocate that into the side here. We're gonna have it come out the side here and ride along the outside of the fender, you know, straight in through here, plug in the driver's side headlight and then route underneath the core support. You know, obviously the horn, if I decide to use that, passenger side headlight and then back out through here, maybe back into the car on this side or I'll do it underneath the dash. We'll see how that one turns out. But you know, the main harness is my main worry here. Obviously that's what we're gonna be doing the video on. Uh, maybe I'll show clips of making the other one too, but that's where we're at. So introduction to the video, obviously have everything laid out, all the materials, you know, whatever material you're gonna make. As far as the harness side, I'll probably use the, you know, black braided to make it as thin as possible and all that stuff. And then any wires I have to lengthen I'll go ahead and lengthen. Here's the uh, other side to the alternator wire that's gonna go to the fuse box. So pretty much this wire will be a standalone, straight off the fuse box, straight to the alternator, and then just the regulator plug will be inside the harness, that green one there. This purge is getting eliminated. We did get rid of that. And then you got your four injectors. I'll clean all this up, making it as thin as possible. The Bosch injectors that I do have do have the adapter plugs, so maybe I'll just wire in that instead of using these, get that clean look. <clears throat> but that's pretty much it. Cut all this stuff back, clean it all up. I will be taking this off. I'll probably use a different grommet for the firewall. Um, you know, it's kind of uh, pretty much stuck on there anyways. You could pretty much take the rubber off and uh, reuse it, but we'll see. We'll see how it turns out. Not really worried about that. It's more about location, having everything planned. And then of course this middle one, probably none of this will get used. This one goes from the battery, obviously to the fuse box feed, your constant to the fuse box, and then the starter. And then this one he had for a, uh, a system he had hooked up. So we won't be worrying about a system right now. So I'll probably end up changing this whole harness. I'm not gonna use anything off of here. Uh, make my own starter wire, power wire. Uh, maybe do a four gauge or something like that and then uh, you know power up the fuse box from the inside the constant so that's what it's looking like 
kind of looks overwhelming, but if you take it one step at a time, you know, and just label everything, know everything you're cutting, like I said, write things down, guys. You know, it beats spending five, six hundred bucks on a wiring harness, and then you're going to end up having to route it and uh, do most of the steps, even buying a wiring, wiring harness. At least this way, you get the satisfaction of, you know, you made a custom wiring harness for the custom, you know, engine build or whatever, you know, clean it up. Because I do want to route this differently than, uh, you know, the rye wire, that harness that I was looking at. So that's a quick one, guys. Um, you know, leave me down in the comments, you know, exactly what you'd like to see as far as this harness goes. You know, I know a lot of times when I edit my videos, I do time lapse a lot. Um, you know, like, like I said, guys, I, I sometimes get into the zone. Um, you know, stepping you, stepping you guys, most of you guys, obviously, that watch my videos, you guys know your way around cars and things like that. But, you know, I, I feel like I don't want to be repetitive. I don't want to talk about things that maybe you guys already know about and things like that. But, you know, any main part of this harness build you guys want to see, whether it be depinning or routing or the layout. However, obviously, each car is going to differ. But for you, at least Civic builds, you know, it's... Uh, it's pretty much the same throughout the board. You know, a B-series motor is, is, is a B-series harness pretty much between 94, 95, 96, all the way up to forever. I mean, they're still using the same har plugs and harnesses that they did 20 years ago. So that's really what, that's why these are pretty much easy builds. You know, a lot of stuff is interchangeable. A lot of stuff can use between engine platforms and chassis platforms, however it is. But uh, you guys, like I said, let me know down in the comments what exactly you like to see, whether it's deep pinning, you know, routing it, um, you know, the layout, things like that. It's it, every custom job is going to be different. So, you know, I, I will time lapse through some of them. I just basically want to give you my ideas um, how I would route something like this and how most people would route something like this to get the cleanest look. Have that mental image in your head, you know, and then just try to bring it to life, obviously, as you go. But We'll get to the video this week. I got to order some more materials. Some of the materials that I ordered in the wiring showed up. It's not, I, I'm not going to be able to use it, so I got to rewire it. Um, I want to buy some different gauge braid protector and all that stuff. I'll probably use Tesla tape, you know, all quality stuff for this. I don't know if I'm going to put any color on it or leave it black. That way it hides better, but had to get one out there for you guys. Had to show you how the Civic's looking. Right now I think it's coming together. Got through more of the parts that came in this week. Um, still waiting on the injectors. Still haven't ordered a turbo kit yet. Um, probably not gonna go with an eBay turbo kit. We'll see. Um, I'd like to get everything set up as far as wiring and all that stuff. You know, slapping a turbo on here and everything's pretty much set up for it anyways. You know, I got the uh, oil feed. I still gotta drill the pan for the drain back. So, you know, getting everything set up for any universal turbo that I choose, whether I get it from eBay, um, you know, uh, go auto works. There's a couple, uh, couple of you guys turned me on to some I've been looking at and some I'm getting serious about buying. So make a few calls when I'm ready to make that move and, uh, find out what we're going with. But I figure after the wire harness and then still the body work and everything else, that's just too many man hours to put into, uh, slap an eBay turbo on this. You know, it's like every day I, every day I wake up, I want more and more horsepower and better and better parts and for it to look better and better. But that's, the point of a build, you know, just trying to uh, get this thing taken care of before the weather starts to turn, which I don't think it's going to turn anytime soon. You guys can see we finally got some snow again today. Uh, it's been pretty mild, not that much snow as much as we usually have, but I'm rambling on. I'm going to go ahead and uh, wrap this one up, guys. You guys stay tuned for the actual build. Like I said, I wanted to do kind of progress video and an introduction to this uh, wiring harness how we're gonna do it. You guys leave your comments down below, you know, what actually you guys would like to see in detail making this wiring harness, this DIY wiring harness. As always guys, like, comment, subscribe. Check you in the next one. Signing out.